Hey, welcome back to another quick 10 minute tutorial. So I was checking out the Blender Nodes channel at gamedev.tv discord the other day and I came across an interesting question and it occurred to me that this question would be the perfect example to show off the repeat zone and geometry nodes. So let me get it set up by jumping into geometry nodes, we'll click on new and we'll call this repeating curve and we're going to be looking at the repeat zone. So I want to start with a curve here, so I'll open the Add menu with Shift A and I'll grab an arc. I chose this because we can clearly see the start and the end points here. At the moment this has a resolution of 16, that will come in handy later on. But what I want to do is set out the problem here. So let's just make this 3D view full screen for a moment. You can see that with this curve arc we have different points and our different segments. The question is, what if we take one of these points and then the next point and create a curve line in between them that kind of droops down? And then we want to repeat that all the way around our curve. Well, it's actually pretty easy to do that. What we want to do is we want to find a way to do it once and then have Blender repeat it for us. That way we can make it really efficient. And we're going to use the repeat zone for this. So again, Shift A and we'll grab a repeat zone. And if you're not aware what this does, it takes in geometry and it outputs geometry and then anything that happens in between this repeat zone gets repeated the number of times in iterations. At the moment we're going to leave that at 1. So let's connect our geometry inputs and outputs. But we need a way to get the positions of the first two points. The easiest way to do this is with a sample index node, so let's grab that. We're going to drop this in here, it will disconnect the second output but don't worry about that, we'll connect that in a moment. We'll make a little bit of space here and we'll also grab a join geometry node and we'll connect up our original curve. Now with the sample index node what we want to do is get the vector or the position of each of the points. With this first sample index node we're going to find the vector position of the point at index 0. So from value we're going to drag off and grab a position node and index 0 is going to be at this point here that gives us access to the position through the value output. We want to duplicate this down and we want to change the index to 1. That's going to allow us to grab the position of the next index. Now you've noticed I've not actually connected the geometry there but don't worry I'll come back to that in just a moment. Next what we want to do is do something with these positions and that's going to be by changing the start and end points of a Bezier segment. So we'll grab that, we'll change the resolution down a little bit just so we're not using too many points. We'll connect our start and our end positions and we'll change our start handle and end handle details to zero and we'll just make the Z value a little bit negative. That will allow it to droop down. So once we join this up, you can see that we have a bit of an issue. The main issue there is we didn't connect up that second sample index node. So we'll just drag off of that and plug that into geometry. And you can see that's mostly fixed. However, instead of drooping down, this seems to be moving towards the center. And that's because in Bezier segment, we have it set at position at the moment. We actually want that set to offset and that way these handles go downwards relative to their own position and not the geometry as a whole. So now we have that first drooping section and we want to repeat that all the way around our curve. The way we would do that is by increasing the index in both of these sample index nodes by 1. And we want to do that for the number of iterations mentioned in our repeat zone. So at the moment what we want to do is drag off a new value from our repeat zone which is automatically going to be set to a name of index and plug that in. Now again we need the second one to be one higher so we'll just drop in a math node and we'll just add one to that value. You can see our curve is again working perfectly and what we want to do is we want to pass this index to the output of our repeat zone. The reason we want to do that is every single iteration we want to increase that value by 1. So again we'll just use another math node for that. And I think this kind of throws people off but every time this goes and loops around our repeat zone every iteration our index is going to go up by 1. Now for our number of iterations we need to know how many segments we actually need. 
In the case of this arc, we actually have 15 segments. The reason for that is we have a resolution of 16 on a circle that would usually give us 16 segments, but in this case, because we have that gap, we actually have one less. So in this case, the number of iterations we need is 15. Again, we want to make this procedural. So what we're going to do is add in an integer node. And again, we're using integer because we want whole numbers. We will connect this to our resolution and we'll change that to 16. And we'll also connect this up to our number of iterations. But again, we need to subtract one from that in this case. So we'll add in a math node, change it to subtract and plug in a value of one. So that's our full setup. Now we can adjust our resolution up and down with a single slider and it will automatically adjust our iterations. So now we have a fully procedural system. We can also go in and we can change aspects of the arc, things like the radius, the start angle, the sweep angle, and everything is going to continue working. Okay, so I hope you learned something from this repeat zone tutorial. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense to you if it didn't already. Again, you can find all my courses over on gamedev.tv. You can find a link in the description. As always, you can find me over on the Discord at gamedev.tv. You can find me on the forums at gamedev.tv. And you can find me on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. And if you have any interesting questions, any questions you want me to answer, any problems that you have, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you, especially if you're one of the students that have graciously bought one of my courses and gave me such awesome reviews over on gamedev.tv or on Udemy. And... Hopefully I'll see you soon with another short tutorial. Bye for now.